Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here again, bringing another awesome math video. In this video, I'm going to discuss some typical quadratic area problems. So you get faced with this problem as you go through a course a lot of times, and uh, you've done like maximum questions where you might have to find maximum area, maximum revenue, maximum height. So those are vertex questions. And then you get stuck with other types of questions that involve finding x-intercepts. So it, it becomes a battle is which type of problem is which. So I always look for you know key quest, key things in questions like words and things like that that imply what I need to do. So if it ever says the words max, min, and uh, if you can pick up my writing here hopefully, max, min, and then you have uh, least, or greatest, those imply that I need to find vertexes. So like I said before, max area, maximum revenue, uh, maximum height, things like that, those are vertex questions where I want to find where the quadratic function has the uh, largest value. All right, So the y is, the, y is basically the biggest. Pretty much every other type of question, if it lacks those term, words, are going to involve finding the x-intercepts, uh, solutions, whatever you might want to call it, solving a quadratic equation. All right, so that's the difference, a quadratic equation versus a function, where a function has y and x, an equation would just have x or just y, potentially, but mostly just x. Uh, so we'll use this guy. So let's see how, let's just read this question. Maybe we can sort of, you know, pick out a few things that we might want to look at. All right, so this is a photo measures 20 by 25, and it has a frame uniform width as shown. So you can see the frame uniform width here, X, even though it doesn't look uniform on screen, it actually should be, uh, as shown. The combined area of the frame and the photograph is 750 centimeters squared. Algebraically determine the width of the frame. So I'm just going to label this X all the way around here. Just like this. And it says that my photograph of this lovely, lovely kitty is 20 by 25. So I'll call this this guy up here 20. Kind of hard to pick out there, I know. And then this guy right here, 25. Alright, so we need to set up a uh, equation for this particular scenario. So when you're talking about uh, combined area, then you're always going to think area is equal to length times width. So area is equal to length times the width. So it says determine the width of the frame. So we're actually looking for, um, you know, you know, the dimensions of it, we'll say. All right, so I know the area is 750, so I can fill that number in. Now, what is the length and the width of this frame? So if I look here, it's 20 right here, and I have an X and an X on either side. So this entire width of this frame is X plus the 20 for the photo, and then another X. So that's 2Xs and 20. So that gives me a 2X plus 20. It doesn't matter what I call L or what I call um, what I call W, but I'll just I'll just start with the 2x plus 20. Okay. I see. And then second thing, we have x, and then we're going down this guy right here, so that's 25. So x, another x, that's 2x plus 25. So that is the length and the width. So again, if I look at this, this is not a quadratic function. A quadratic function is y equals to or f of x equals to. This has only x, therefore it's a quadratic equation, therefore the only thing I can really do with it is solve for x. So keep that in mind, all right? And note the lack of, um, you know, least, greatest, max, min, initial. It's all just algebraically determined the width, which is just x. So we're looking for this, the width of the frame. We'll get the outside dimensions here anyway, just for fun. Um, so the width of the frame is x. So this is uniform width all the way around. 
So what we need to do is sort of foil this out. So first outside, inside, last. So 750. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 25, so that's going to be plus 50x. And 2x times 20 is 40x. And then 20 times 25, I don't know why I put an equal sign there. 20 times 25 is 500. So I'm just going to erase that. So plus 500. All right, so I got 0 is equal to 4x squared plus, and then I have 90x, and then subtract 750. So I subtract, I got it again, I got to get this guy in ax squared plus bx plus c form. And he taught, my god, this is horrible. Let me try again. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So there we go. So it has to be in this form in order to use quad form, quadratic formula. So I want to I want to make sure that I have zero on this side or the other side doesn't really matter. So then it becomes negative 250. And there's my quadratic equation. Again, only x, no y. So therefore I have to use quad form. All right, let's go ahead now and use quadratic formula. So I'll read it re I'll write it out just for the sake of this video. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So I go ahead now, I sub my negative b in, so negative 90. So my a is 4, for those of you who like doing this, b is 90. And once you get good at this, chances are you don't do this, but it's one of those practices that if you're struggling or if you're trying to get yourself a few more marks or you want to avoid mistakes, this is always good practice. Negative B, so negative 90, so I sub in my B, and then I have 90 squared minus 4, and then A is 4, and C is negative 250. There we go. All divided by 2 times 4. So now go ahead and work out what's underneath my square root first. So I have 90 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 250. And that gives me, looks like it's going to be a pretty solid number. So plus or minus square root 21100. So 12, and then that's divided by 8. Let's work this way now. So the square root of that is going to be 110. So negative 90 plus or minus 110. I'll divide it by 8. So I have to do negative 90 plus 110. Again, this is a step, guys, that a lot of you guys probably wouldn't make. If you're doing this in practice, you'd probably just do the two steps after this. And then I'm just showing you for the sake of what I'm going to do in my calculator, okay? I'll divide it by 8. So I have negative 90 plus 110. Negative 90 plus 110. I'll divide it by 8. So it's 20 divided by 8. So that's 2.5. So these are x values, by the way. x equals. And then this one's going to be an extraneous root because it's going to be negative. But I'll work it out anyway. So negative 200 divided by 8 is negative 25. So when we're talking about widths, guys, we're going to call that an extraneous solution. So we're going to reject, reject it. So that means that my width is 2.5. So that's my x value right there. So that's the width of the frame. Now, if I want to find the actual dimensions, like the width of the entire photograph. We're talking about the width of the frame. We're talking about just like this guy as we go around. If I want the length and width of the photograph, what I do is take my 2.5 and sub it back into my two initial equations that I found. And I just do that right now. And there we go. And again, I just work those out. 2 times 2.5 plus 20, 25. 25, and then 30. All right, there it is, guys. So that's a perfect example of a quadratic area word problem. That's not a max or min question. Let's give another one a shot. This one's a bit tougher. 
All right, squares transform into a rectangle by increasing the length by 8 meters and the width by 5 meters. If the area of the resulting rectangle is 108 meters squared, algebraically determine the length of each side of the original square. So again, we're, not, we're talking about there's no mention of max or min or least or greatest, so your initial instincts, you should be thinking quad form. So here's my square. It's x by x, so I don't know it. And since we're looking for that x, chance is pretty good chance that we're going to use quad form to find that x. We're going to get an equation instead of a function. So we're increasing the length by 8 and the width by 5. So let's say, uh, try a little section on here. So that's 8 right there. And then I'll increase this guy by 5. So that's the length, that's the width. Again, it doesn't matter, it's a square. And then we get this rectangle. So that's what's happening in this question. You get x by x, you increase the length by 5, and the, or the width by 5, and the length by 8. So now we get a new rectangle. x plus 8 times x plus 5. So that's the length and the width of this guy. So that's L, W. And then the area is equal to 108. There it is. So that's my, again, that's my equation. So a little bit tougher to set up this time, but a little bit easier to solve, I think, probably. So we'll uh, foil this out. So it's x squared plus 8x plus 5x plus 45 is equal to 108. So then I get x squared plus 13x plus, so I'll subtract 108 from both sides. So 45, if I calculate right, subtract 108, so that's negative 63. I already got my plus sign, so I'll put it, subtract 63. Zero, and I'll rewrite this. x squared plus 13x minus 63 is equal to zero. So now it's a quad form question, guys. Again, this is an equation, not a function. So I have x. I'm just going to sub it right into it this time. So b is negative 13. So b is 13, so it's negative 13 plus or minus square root 13 squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times 1. There we go. So I'll do the square root first. So 13 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 63. So we get 421 underneath the root sign. 421 does not have a perfect square, I don't think. Which makes me kind of curious. I thought I would have a perfect square. Let me just try that again. So I want to make sure that I have this done correctly. Alright, so 13 squared minus 4 times negative 63. Oh, I see the problem. This should be 40. Mental math fails me again. It's all right, guys. Nobody's nerfing. There we go, 63, 68. But again, I recognize that, you know, questions like this, and you guys can learn from my mistakes, as I tell my students all the time. Questions like this, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get a good number. And uh, that's why I knew that I must have messed something up along the way, because... I thought that was a pretty good answer to this question. All right, so so negative 13 plus or minus square root 441 all divided by 2. Square root of 441 is 21. So negative 13 plus or minus 21 all over 2. So then I'll just do that real quick here now just to finish this video. So negative 13 plus 21 divided by 2 is 3.5. So that's my first value for x. And my second value is negative 13 minus 21, so it's going to be negative, so it's going to be extraneous, negative 17. And this guy is no good. So my original width of the square is 3 by 3. And again, you could test this if you want it by subbing in this 3.5 in here, 3.5, multiplying to see if you get 108. And there it is, guys. Hopefully you've sort of, I've been able to sort of jog your brain a little bit and, uh, sort of figure out what was going on with these area questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class. If you like this video, subscribe, like, share, send me a comment if there's something I can do. 
type of video you want me to make. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support. See you guys in class.